Sony's Hi8 format with over 400 lines of horizontal resolution upped the game in video, and so did the CCD V5000 with its analog meters and attractive styling. This was a unit that was really desirable. Odds are that any CCD V5000 that you find today will not be working because of an issue called leaky caps. But I have here in front of me a refurbished model that works great. We're gonna test it. I'm gonna show you the features, details, and pictures, and it's gonna be exciting. And that's coming up right now. Back to the Future is where the JVC GRC1 made its debut, but Newtek's video toaster revolution with Kiki Stockhammer gave us a glimpse of the 5000. And a handsome unit it is with its bold industrial styling and the pro name proudly displayed on the side. It's a pro model, but only with one CCD. Sony had a habit of having their pro models with three CCDs like this Sony CCD VX3. But what makes this camera pro are its many manual controls and buttons and its electronic viewfinder that is detachable. There are flip out doors and dials and editing controls and buttons and switches galore. Of course, there's a black and white low resolution viewfinder and the same typical Sony mechanism. So before we get right into the details of the camera, I think I should just give you a brief background about the Hi8 format, which the camera shoots in. <clears throat> Let me just get into my uh, 80s voice. <clears throat> In 1989, Sony extended personal video into the field of super high quality video recording by introducing the Video Hi8 format. The camera sports a fast 1.4 8 times zoom which can be manually controlled or with the power switch on front. There's no flip out LCD screen but the viewfinder tilts up for creative angles. The camera is sizable but not too big. So like just about all cameras from this time period, the foam on the microphone has completely deteriorated. Now, I don't know about you, but I sort of like the authentic look. So what I do sometimes is get a spare wind sock. And although it doesn't fit 100%, it just gives it a look that it was close to supposed to have. The flip up door gives easy access to certain editing controls. Iris, white balance, and shutter speed can be controlled right from the camera without having to dig through menus. And there are several options for external audio. The AFM Hi Fi stereo is FM modulated and recorded along with the picture, while the PCM digital stereo is recorded on a different track. Furthermore, there is even a pop up narration microphone that allows narration to be added by the cameraman while shooting. Um, excuse me, have you not heard of political correctness? Uh, we have a camera woman. Let's go to her right now. The camera is almost as big as she is, but we're gonna test one of the external mics and see how that works. You'll be able to hear how the input is a bit hot. We're standing here at a very famous site. A meteor actually landed here about 40 years ago, and this actually killed off the dinosaurs. Nobody really realizes this, but this is a very famous situation. Let me show you the narration mic feature so that the cameraman can actually narrate while this idiot is talking. And so the dinosaurs really are, they were incredible. How they got totally got extinct by this meteor. What, is he crazy? That really landed at this lake. What a moron. It's something that is just, it could be about 40 feet deep. Yeah, right. I don't know. You don't know anything. Now, in order to hear both tracks simultaneously, you need an external deck that can support both PCM and standard and be able to mix between the two. And I have this EVS 7000. To prevent accidental recording, there's a locking mechanism right near the record button. The back of the camera is bristling with outputs, including S-Video, and inputs too if you want to record a signal. And here is where you attach the battery, which are hard to find. I bought from a company called Castar because that's like the only one around that you could find either on eBay or on Amazon. I got the slimmer ones and they worked and then they crapped out, so I bought the heavier duty ones. So far, so good. But I'm just telling you, attaching this to the back of the camera is difficult. You have to like really fuss with it because it feels like it's gonna break, so just be careful. To further improve the Hi8 system's superior performance, the CCD V5000 features advanced digital picture processing functions. 
And let's check out some of those functions now. Here I'm doing my daily jumping jacks. Let's see how they look in slow motion. There's only one speed, which looks like about one fifth, but you can see that there's quite a bit of snow and distortion in the picture. Now behind a flip out door, there is a slow tracking adjustment. So in trying to adjust the picture, I found that it did improve somewhat, but still not quite perfect. The camera did a far better job with the still function, and here you can see the TBC really kicking in. And this is the standalone shotgun mic. This is the built-in shotgun one-point mic, they call it. The wind mic is off. Wind mic is off. Now we are in the wind position. The wind is blowing. Probably about 15 miles an hour. We are in the wind position. The camera definitely has a large footprint and you feel like a news reporter with the camera, but it's certainly not as large as let's say a Betacam SP camera. You want to go by the ducks, like pet the ducks? Do what? Do what? Just like pet them? No, I'm not petting them, but I'll go near them. You're going they bite. Ducks bite? Yes, these are not but ducks. These are Canadian geese and they're vicious. Were you all of a sudden a duck expert? They're yeah. vicious. I'm not petting them, but I'll go near them. All right, go near them. Let's see if they attack you. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This could be interesting. We'll see if our model Karen is going to be attacked by the Canadian geese. They're starting to make noises. Oh, uh oh. Do you want me to get them to all fly away? No, I wouldn't want you to do that. I'm seeing a little flare in the viewfinder. Well, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. All captured with the Sony CCDV 5000. The CCDV 5000 realizes a wide range of special digital effects that can be added when shooting or at post production. Let's take a look at a few examples. All right, you're right now, you're solarized. How does it feel? How's it supposed to feel? Have you been drinking? Oh, I don't drink. Well, it's, it seems like you have. It's like I took the wrong week to quit drinking. Strobe three, this is strobe two, and this is strobe one. The CCD V5000 is also equipped with a digital noise reduction circuit to further improve signal to noise ratio. You can choose from three levels of reduction according to the type of picture you're recording. And this is noise reduction one, noise reduction to noise reduction three. I really don't see the difference. And this is multi. I keep pressing the multi button and this is the effect. It's kind of a weird, silly effect, but I don't really know what good it is or anything. Absolutely nothing. Interesting why Sony would put a bunch of hokey digital effects on a camera they label as Pro, but I guess that was the thing to do during that time period. One thing I noticed with the camera, as I have with other older CCDs, you can see the black lines. It seems to be when there's high contrast up against the sky. It's probably the CCD going bad over the years. If you know, let me know in the comments section what exactly is going on. In terms of holding the camera, where are the hump on the shoulder bracket rests? It's not really comfortable. It's like sort of awkward with your arm. There is this release. I would recommend pressing it and sliding it back, obviously depending on a particular body. But for me, it makes it a lot easier, more comfortable this way. A nice feature of the camera is its macro function. This is macro. We are real close to these plants here real close. It's literally almost on top of the lens. With a camera this heavy, it's really nice to have a, a handle to carry it. Um, just makes it a lot easier. And we're going to power zoom it right back. I'm going to go to the manual zoom. And the focus does work. Takes a second or two. You've been seeing this duck scene in Hi8. Take a look at it now with an iPhone 11 Pro. And you can make a comparison. 
This is the sun position. Now we are in auto. Now we are in auto. This is the sun. And then back to auto. See if you can see a difference. I can't with the black and white viewfinder. Nothing to see here. Does it feel like there's a bag of bricks on my shoulders? Yeah. But I also feel like a pro because it says so right on the camera. So that's the price you have to pay, I guess. <laughs> can I get a video of you and your dog? Yeah, she turned one in November. She turned one in November, wow. Very... She's looking at me very intently. <laughs> I wonder if she recognizes this is an old camera. <laughs> yeah. She thinks she does. That's why. Oh, <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> yeah, that, I do. Yeah, I have to it's the high eight format. What is he talking about? The newly developed Precision Cat's Eye CCD chip that realizes a minimum illumination of two lux. Okay, we're gonna do a low light test for the CCD V5000. And while I do that, I might as well just show you some vintage camcorders. This is a JC Penny model camcorder. Yes, the clothing store. They actually licensed the camcorder model. I think Panasonic had a very similar model, but in a different color, more like a whitish color. This actually works, and I will review it one day. If you wanna take a look at my retro camcorder collection, please check out that video. If you remember, if you had video magazines or video review magazines, they advertised this device all the time. It was a hybrid eight special effects generator. This is before the video toaster came out and nonlinear editing. We use this to create basic white patterns from one screen to the next. Okay, this is in standard setting for the gain. Let's see how this looks. This scene looks just with a standard iPhone. This is a scene with a standard iPhone. Here we have the sensitivity in the high position, and this is the super high sensitivity for the CCD V5000. And it's a relatively dark room. We're gonna make it even darker. It is like super dark right here. Super dark, can barely see anything. Let's see how this looks. We'll compare this also now to an iPhone. Same scene with an iPhone 11 Pro. iPhone 11 Pro. And this is the scene shot with the Alpha One with the Alpha One. A nice little extra to this camera is it has a built-in speaker. So when you're playing back your tapes, you can actually hear what was recorded. That switch works in low light situations. It's not particularly loud, but it gets the job done. So after watching this video, what do you think? Do you go ahead and get a CCD V5000 and impress the ladies? Who needs that fancy schmancy car? This on your shoulder? This will do it. This will make you feel young again and cool again. But just be careful. If you decide to buy one, like I mentioned earlier, please check out my video on buying vintage camcorders online to give you some tips. Because unfortunately, this camera was plagued by a problem called leaky caps. You can buy refurbished ones online from reputable sellers, or you can buy one that's not working and if you want to get it refurbished, you can as well, or maybe you're lucky enough and you can get one, but all I'm saying is just be careful. A very cool camera from the 90s cemented the Hi8 format forever in our memories with this piece of tech to remember. Thanks for watching, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.